Somehow the WWE have managed to confuse their audience and even themselves. Who is the WWE Champion? I don't know. Do you guys know? If this video gets 300 likes, I will upload my WWE Battleground 2016 predictions video on Wednesday. So Seth Rollins walked out with the WWE Championship, but then they announced on the WWE Network that Dean Ambrose was still the WWE Champion. So like I predicted, this was just a cheeky ploy to get in the ratings tomorrow. Everybody's going to tune in to tomorrow's show to see who really is the WWE Champion. I don't know how they're going to sort this thing out. A lot of people think they're going to bring back the second world title. So if you think about it like that, this was a pretty clever way to set up the return of the World Heavyweight Championship. But it's just confusing. People are confused. The crowd didn't know where to look. It was just weird. I think sometimes they try to be a little bit too clever and sometimes it just doesn't really work. I can see what they're doing. They want people to get confused. They want people to tune in tomorrow to see what happens with the WWE Championship. Who is the real champion? But I don't know. We'll see how they resolve it on tomorrow's show. But I think that match was actually pretty damn awesome. That was a great main event. Every single Monday Night Raw where a championship is defended, it's always a bloody good Monday Night Raw. And this main event just topped off a brilliant, brilliant show. What a great main event. I mean... Holy shit. The best moment of the match was when Seth Rollins went for his turnbuckle powerbomb. He hit it, and then Dean Ambrose, straight away, after being hit from the powerbomb, turns it into a Dirty Deeds. This guy is great. This match was great. I really enjoyed it. It was definitely worth the wait. I am guess we're going to have to find out who really is the champion tomorrow, but it was worth it. This was an awesome, awesome match. Great way to end a brilliant show, but there was so much more to talk about. So we got the announcement of who was going to be the GM of Raw and who was going to be the GM of SmackDown. So I was way off with my prediction about the GM of Raw. People thought it was either going to be Steve Austin or Triple H. That was the rumor, and it turned out to be bloody Mick Foley. Who thought it was going to be Mick Foley, which was cool. That was unpredictable. It's nice to get something not expected on Monday Night Raw for once. But it just kind of doesn't really make a lot of sense. Because Stephanie McMahon, she's bad. She plays a bad character. She's a heel. She's nasty. So why would a good guy like Mick Foley join forces with Stephanie McMahon? It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Now, it would have made complete sense if Triple H was the GM of Raw. Because he's also a bad guy. But Mick Foley... Eh, I don't see how that w really works. Now, I really like the decision to have Daniel Bryan the SmackDown GM. I think Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan are hugely popular. And Daniel Bryan was the number one guy who can make the SmackDown brand good again. But Mick Foley, a good guy working with Stephanie McMahon, potentially one of the biggest heels in recent years, it just defies all logic. Now, it will get people watching WWE Raw, it will get people watching WWE SmackDown, we'll see how it goes. I'm not going to complain too much because it's Mick Foley. It could have been a lot worse. I really wanted to see a feud between Triple H and Shane McMahon. It doesn't really seem like we're going to get that anymore. It would have been nice to see, but I think Mick Foley will do a good job. It just doesn't really make a lot of sense. Anyway, it was great to see Daniel Bryan back. They could do a hell of a lot more with this guy. It was really sad when he had to retire at the start of the year, but I'm really, really glad he's going to be back on our TVs week in, week out. Everybody loves him. He is going to take SmackDown two new heights and they could potentially break ratings records with SmackDown now that you've got Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon in control of that show. Anyway, swiftly moving on, we had a great way to start this week's Raw because we kicked it off with a freaking awesome tag match with Jericho and Owens teaming up to take on Cesaro and Sami Zayn. These guys have such great chemistry. I don't know about you guys, but do you want to see Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho make a tag team? They are hilarious. It would be awesome. Imagine if they called it Jerry KO. It's perfect. Come on, guys. Anyway, this match was a really good way to start Monday Night Raw. Lots of pace. Of course, they have lots of chemistry. They know each other so, so well. Some of the best wrestlers in the WWE right now. So I love this match. We also had Darren Young in his first singles match since teaming up with his manager, Bob Backlund. And I think Darren Young looked pretty good here. I really like the finish. 
they had Alberto Del Rio get distracted by The Miz when The Miz tried to distract Darren Young. So it all backfired. It all went tits up. Somehow Darren Young was able to get a roll up on a distracted Del Rio. It just went all over the place. It was hilarious. Darren Young won, which is awesome. Pretty decent match. It was a little bit short, but Darren Young, what we saw of him, he looks great. I want to see this match at Battleground. Is he going to win? I think the highlight of the show was potentially the Big Cass and Enzo Amore promo with John Cena. Absolutely hilarious stuff. I absolutely loved it when Xavier Woods started naming all the Pokemon characters. And then he said, then that's only the 150 original Pokemon characters. I haven't even got on to the 130 new Pokemon Go characters, baby. I was literally laughing my head off for about 10 seconds with that. That was hilarious. But so much great chemistry in the ring. Enzo Amore is hilarious. I think his best joke was when he said the only time women open their mouths for Carl Anderson is when they're yawning. That, that was so funny. Anyway, I think Enzo Amore is on absolute fire right now. I think him and Big Cass are great. They proved it tonight. They absolutely owned John Cena on the microphone. Enzo Amore and Big Cass are currently cutting the best promos in the WWE right now. So the match itself was a huge 10-man tag match. It was great. It was pretty awesome. I really like the finish to the match where it just went all over the place. Everybody was hitting their finishes. It was mental. Some people might complain that AJ Styles got the pin on Enzo Amore. Oh, it buried Enzo Amore. He didn't bury Enzo Amore. AJ Styles needed a big, big win. I think at Battleground that Enzo, Big Cass, and John Cena will get the win. So it will all be forgotten about. And they will get their win back on Sunday. One last thing I want to talk about is the Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch teaming up to take on Charlotte and Dana Brooke. I didn't even realize that Becky Lynch was facing Natalia at Battleground. Who really wants to see that match? So this was just a huge clusterfuck. Natalia came out towards the end of the match, started beating up Becky Lynch. The match ended in DQ. Who gives a crap? Natalia, why is she heel? Why is she facing Becky Lynch? I don't want to see that. You guys don't want to see that. I don't know what's going on with the women's division right now. Dana Brooke's boring. Why she's teaming up with Charlotte, I have no idea. She needs to go back to NXT. Why isn't Sasha facing Charlotte for the title on Sunday? I don't know. It just feels like a bit of a big disappointment. Anyway, I can't wait for the WWE draft. It is going to be awesome. I'm going to do a review straight after the show tomorrow with results and reactions. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. This week's Raw is going to get an 8 out of 10 from me. Who really is the WWE champion? I'm sure we're going to find out on tomorrow's WWE draft show. Anyway, smash the likes. 300 is the target. Take care. Spike your hair.